A lot of people like to give snipers shit. You know, you hear people talking and saying that sniper is overpowered, or it's nothing but clicking on heads, or that all sniper mains are assholes, and as true as two of those three statements are, nothing exemplifies them better than an entire subset of sniper secondaries. The backpacks are probably my least favorite of the sniper secondaries, and they take up the majority. Let me explain my perspective, because I'm sure the notoriously quick-tempered, cozy camper snipers of the world are already hard at work deplatforming me in the comments section. I'm very active when I play sniper, arguably too active because I'll often get bored and just run into bad positions because fuck it, if I'm not gonna shoot something, I'm at least going to get shot. I'll always see these snipers standing on one point of the map, and I honestly wonder how they're even having fun. It's effective, sure, but it's also kind of boring. So naturally, I like secondaries that let me be active in capacities beyond just clicking on heads. This is why the SMG is my favorite secondary, and Jurati is not only a great support tool to help out your team, but it can also get yourself out of a jam, and this is all on you and your abilities to hit your shots, hit a Jurati optimally to help out the most people, or to follow up on your own Jurati. The backpacks just require that you click on them on the loadout select screen. The only thing you can do once you equip them is remember they exist. They serve gameplay functions, sure, and they can make you play a little more optimally depending on the rest of your loadout or the other players on the server, but the designs of two of these in particular just kind of bug me. I'll start off by saying the Cozy Camper is definitely my favorite of the bunch, and actually used to be my go-to secondary before the nerf because I fucking hate Scorch Shot Pyros if you somehow couldn't tell by now. Once it got nerfed to the point where it only applied the lack of flinching while fully charged and I got my strange festive SMG, I started using the Cozy Camper less and less, but it still has its uses. For example, I think it works spectacularly with the Bizarre Bargain, as the near instant full charges almost negate having to wait for the bonus that removes flinching, and it works well with the Classic for a similar reason that I detailed in my Bad Weapon Academy video on the Classic. Being able to heal yourself is also nice because I often feel a little guilty taking health packs and medics never fucking heal me, but if you have an engineer on your team then that aspect is almost useless because dispensers do the same thing and you should be playing around your engineer as much as possible anyway. But if you don't want to do that, then having your own mini dispenser certainly frees you up to move around more. But at the end of the day, the only thing the Cozy Camper has against something that takes an engineer 8 seconds to build is that now hitscan classes can't fuck up your aim as easy, assuming they don't have a sniper or spy who's there to punish you for constantly hard scoping. The Razorback, on the other hand, is on an entire other level, and not in a good way. I have more than 50 hours in this game, so I understand how spies work, which means the Razorback is essentially superfluous on top of my functioning brain cells. If I get stabbed once, I know that a spy is present and coming after me, so all it takes is me being aware that he exists. And even if I do equip it, I can easily just get gunned down if he's using the Ambassador, Diamondback, or even the Enforcer if you can manage it. Hell, it doesn't even protect you from the stock or the left the only reason I can see for using the Razorback is if A, there's multiple spies on the enemy team that are after you, or B, you're so fucking paranoid about trick stabs and weeb-ass, punk-ass spy mains who crank up their CL interps so that they backstab you 30 fucking seconds ago that you don't see any other option. And then there's the Darwin's Danger Shield. This weapon has had such a contentious history, and before Jungle Inferno, I easily would have called this my most hated weapon in the game. See, it's not just that it used to fuck over other snipers for free at no real downside, it's that it fucked over everyone. It made Sniper, the glass cannon, tankier against everything basically for free. You might say that it had an explosive damage weakness, but with the boosted health, that gave you an effective health pool of 126 health against explosives. I have had Darwin's Danger Shield snipers run away from me as soldier with one health left before the nerf, and it boiled my fucking piss. Now, it's not game-breaking by any stretch of the imagination, and you'd think that with how much I fucking hate Scorch Shot Pyros, I'd love this weapon and start using it all the time now that it blocks afterburn and a lot of fire damage. Well, no, not really. 
See, my problem with these two weapons isn't just that they're passive rather than active. It's that their entire purpose and design is based around completely fucking over one class for free. Just because a pyro locking down an entire choke point or sniper spot is completely brainless on his end, doesn't mean the countermeasure should also be brainless. Or rather, the real problem is that there should be a brainless option in the first place. Like, let's say the Scorch Shot actually gets fucking nerfed, but then the Danger Shield remains the same. That just means it's kind of overpowered against Pyros at no cost of the Sniper. It's like when you're a kid playing pretend and one kid uses his super laser gun that kills everything instantly, so in response, you bring out the Invincibility Shield that blocks even super laser guns, and now everyone's arguing and no one's having fun anymore. It's not fun for me to get completely shut out by someone who can't even rub two brain cells together, so it's not fun for him if I do the same thing. And more importantly, it's not fun for pyros who can actually aim their flares or successfully flank and ambush me. I really, really don't have a problem with pyros who use the other flare guns. I think the encounter between a flare gun pyro and a sniper is actually very balanced as each of them is putting themselves at roughly the same amount of risk, and to shut the other player down requires a fair degree of skill. A sniper won't be able to one-shot a full health pyro with a quick scope, but successfully landing a headshot either forces the pyro to retreat, or continue his advances at further risk to his life as he's now vulnerable to an easy no-scope or SMG volley. And the same is true of the sniper. One flare won't kill him, but it neuters his ability to reliably deal headshots, and if he continues the fight, he's putting not only a lot of faith in his ability to headshot while on fire, but he's also going under the assumption that the pyro won't be able to follow up on another shot when it's clear he's capable of doing so. This is on top of the fact that he won't be able to hard scope at all, because if he stays scoped in for any longer than he has to, he's an easy target for a flare, just as the pyro can't be too predictable with his movements or he's headshot bait. It's a really cool, nuanced interaction that's ruined by both the Scorch Shot and the Danger Shield. I understand that I'm probably the only person in the fucking universe who gives a shit about playing honorably, but it's just more satisfying to rip into a Pyro's skull with actual skill than it is to put on my new legendary drop, the Shield of Go Fuck Yourself. The Razorback is the same way, but honestly a bit worse. Getting behind enemy lines of spy and getting to a sniper that's wrecking your team can be challenging, but the Razorback invalidates that effort on the spy's part, and depending on the sniper's position in regards to the engineer nest and his teammates, a backstab might have been the spy's best bet to take him out, especially if his plan of escape is to cloak or dead ring her away once he gets the stab. By forcing the spy to use his gun for no effort, risk, and very little trade-off on the sniper's part, He's making the spy's job much harder by not only risking his life against a sniper he would have had a free pick on, but also against his surrounding teammates who now have 2-3 to three gunshots to intercept the spy during, instead of one stab animation. I don't think either of these weapons are exactly overpowered, but their design philosophies are ones I don't agree with. I don't think any weapon's sole purpose should be to give a massive middle finger to only one class. I think there should be ups and downs to all weapons in all situations. In a server with no pyros, the danger shield is only good for cosplaying as a crocodile. Right, good job, my and in a server with no spies, the Razorback is an active detriment since it means you can't get overhealed. Compare that to a weapon like the Direct Hit. Sure, it's the fuck mini sentries and fuck scouts rocket launcher, but it isn't just designed around those things. It's not useless on a server without mini sentries and scouts, but maybe that's an unfair comparison because it's an active weapon. So, let's take a weapon like the Mantreads instead. That's also a passive item in the secondary slot. The Mantreads have a function that massively reduces knockback from things like bullets, air blast, and explosives. So you'd think it's a sort of fuck pyros weapon since it effectively negates air blast. But in a server without pyros, it's still useful because it has functions beyond just negating air blast. Not only does it negate all forms of knockback, it gives you more precise air control, and it lets you Goomba stomp people. This is the kind of approach I'd like to see more of in regards to weapon design. Some weapons should give advantages against certain classes or loadouts. Not instant win mechanics, but advantages. And no weapon's sole function should be to screw over another class. So, how would I change these weapons in particular to give them more functionality besides simply fucking over one class? Well, the Razorback is kind of hard for this since there's no real precedent in terms of its previous balance. It would have to be a completely new mechanic. 
One I could see is changing the backstab nullification mechanic to reducing damage from critical hits in general, including backstabs. So backstabs would still do damage, but it would be heavily reduced. Meaning that a spy who comes across a wounded Razorback sniper still at least has a chance against him without having to pull out his gun. And a downside to this is that it doesn't apply to headshots. It's a shield, so it should protect you from some damage, and if it can prevent backstabs, why not other crits? This would definitely also give it some extra utility in MVM with all the crits that has to offer, and give Sniper a reason to use something besides Jurati. And if Valve are being really, really insistent on keeping random crits in the game for some godforsaken reason, then I'd wear this thing all the fucking time. Otherwise, to keep with the stopping backstabs theme, I might give it a reduced damage against melee attacks. I'd say maybe enough to let you survive two melee hits for most classes, but not enough to survive, say, a Market Gardener. I don't want to ruin that strategy for Trollter, since Market Gardening Snipers is really fun. The Danger Shield is a lot easier. It used to have a 25 bonus to health, I say just replace the fire resistance and give it back. The health bonus was never the problem. It was the bullet resistance and the ineffectiveness of the explosion weakness. Speaking of the resistances, on top of this, you could implement a reverse of the pre-Jungle Inferno resistances. More resistance to explosives, but more vulnerability to bullets. It would give snipers a chance against bombing soldiers, who in turn still have a means of doing extra damage with their shotguns. It wouldn't make a difference in sniper duels anyway, since a headshot insta-kills anyway, and snipers would be more vulnerable against rushing scouts. Assuming you make the vulnerability actually work and not give Sniper 126 health against bullet damage. That would be stupid. If you want to take it to an extreme, this could have the potential to have quickscopes kill you even while you're overhealed, so it has the same sort of risk-reward system as the Razorback. But unless any of these happen, I'll probably just be sticking to my SMG and my Jar of Pee. Passive weapons are actually really uncommon in this game, and I think items like the backpacks are a big part of why that is. At the end of the day, they're just underwhelming. That's certainly all I've got to say on the matter, but what do you guys think? Definitely let me know in the comments. Maybe we can get a whole discussion started on this. Who knows? But that's it for me. Until next time. Yeah!